Well, hey there, y'all. My name is Slime Beast. <coughs> hey, everybody. Slime Beast here again, and I'm going to tell you why something called the Hybrid Network is right about the Slenderman movie for the wrong reasons. Now, as far as I can tell from very, very shallow research, uh, this is a channel about movies in general, I guess, and discussing them. Uh, it says on the About page, news, speculation, reviews, podcasts, rumors, and more. So this isn't like a, you know, horror channel. Uh, it's definitely not a creepypasta channel. So, you know, I can't really blame people for not knowing the intricacies and ins and outs of, you know, certain genres and, you know, the, the opinions of people within those communities. Well, it's finally here. The internet sensation for about three or so years. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there, right away, immediately in this video. That's bullshit. Um, yeah, Slenderman sort of had a prime. You know, he had a sort of a rise and a gradual maybe tapering off. But the fact that everybody and their mom knows the name Slenderman, at least in passing, they may not know what it is or what it's about, but they probably have heard or seen it at some point somewhere, uh, shows that this isn't just like something that was popular for a period of three years you know, in the past or whenever. Uh, the time for a Slenderman movie has passed. Uh, the time to strike will, was while the iron was hot during his peak in popularity. Um, so yeah, the, the movie is late. But again, you're right, but for the wrong reasons. Because it's not because Slenderman was popular for like three years in the past. While you might be able to make a case for Slenderman not being as popular as he was in his prime... Uh, I would argue that at no point in history has Slenderman been more mainstream than he is right now. Um, this is a good time to strike with a Slenderman movie if you want to wait uh, for when he's mainstream and kind of a ubiquitous figure that a lot of people know, um, as opposed to striking while he was the most popular with a certain fan base. A more simple way of stating this would be Slenderman is now for normies. Look, far be it from me to be the guy that talks about what doesn't or does deserve a movie. I mean, I'm just a guy that talks about nerd crap. Yeah, I mean, you're saying that you're not able to judge what does or doesn't deserve a movie, but also giving all the reasons that Slenderman doesn't deserve a movie. So, you know, far be it from you to say it, but you are saying it. So I have to address it, you know, I have to address what you're actually saying, as opposed to what you claim you're not saying. Really? Are we really doing this? Holy shit, a movie studio is making a movie about a very popular property that everybody knows about. For a genre that's been sort of skirting the edge on major releases, horror is always this weird kind of niche area of movies. Horror is the sixth most profitable genre of film uh, behind thriller, comedy, drama, action, and adventure. Now, here's the thing with this. I don't even know how this is ranked how this is set up because would Jaws be a horror film or is Jaws a thriller? Would Shaun of the Dead be horror or would it be comedy? Uh, would I Am Legend be horror or would it be action or even adventure? So, you know, I'm not even sure how this is set up, but even looking at this, you know, horror, yeah, it's not one of the top five genres. But it's, you know, it's up there. Now, if we look at the return on investment for movies, in other words, the, be the most profit made by movies, where they pay out a certain amount to make the film, and then that film goes on to earn more than they paid out, you know, return on investment. If we look at the 20 most profitable movies of all time, what do we see here? <laughs> number one, Paranormal Activity. Uh, number two, The Devil Inside Me. Number six is even Paranormal Activity 2. Number seven is Insidious. Number eight is Young Frankenstein. A comedy, but, you know... Eleven is Jaws, though, of course, as I said, that might be, you know, thriller, suspense. Number twelve is Annabelle. Number seventeen is The Purge, of all things. Number twenty is actually Unfriended, which is just sad. So what we can see here is that horror is just outside the top five most profitable genres of film, and 
a few of the top 20 most profitable movies of all time are horror films. So let's take this let's take this point about horror films being an outlier, uh, skirting the outside, you know, not really being you know profitable or good or whatever. Let's take that and wad it up in a little ball and throw that right in the trash. Oh, I'm 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 sorry. I, I didn't I didn't see you there. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. Another example of what I just said about horror movies being good for profit and yeah okay so yeah that that proves what i was saying uh it which just released um now my problem with this point is i feel as if this video is implying something now maybe i am inferring it maybe it's my own fault but i feel like this video by showing it and showing that that has brought sort of a lot of money and interest back into horror supposedly uh, I feel like they're implying that the Slenderman movie is now going to be trying to cash in on it being popular. Like, the movie It came out, and then they said, what about a Slenderman movie to try to capitalize on this renewed interest in horror? You know, like, they're implying that Slenderman is being made because It was popular. Which would not be true because the Slenderman film has been in production, or has been talked about being in production for years and the actual film itself has been in production since before <laughs> uh, it was released to its huge profits. So, I mean, they were making the Slenderman movie before anybody knew it was going to be such a big hit. So that's not that's that's not true at all. You know, that's not the case that they made the Slenderman movie to capitalize on its, you know, profitability. Uh... But yeah, again, I could just be inferring that. Fear is found in everything. And I like horror movies on the grounds that they usually try to exploit those little fears just scraping at the nape of our skulls. Can anybody think of a single film in the past couple decades that has tried to play with the small fears scraping at the back of our skulls as opposed to just jump scaring you with a big boogly oogly man right in your face? What movies is this guy talking about? I mean, the reason I'm taking issue with this is because he says horror films usually do that. And I'm trying to think of one that does. I'm scared shitless by the most mundane things, so usually horror movies kind of relieve that pent-up tension caused by the perpetual state of terror I find myself in. Or I just like to see that fear made tangible and then it kind of puts into perspective what exactly I'm so scared of. As a YouTuber, you should make sure that your audience is engaged and make them feel as if they know you as a person. I mean, what is the point of sharing this information? Uh, I'm, I'm an idiosyncratic horror geek who, you know, has these issues. I feel like I'm this dude's therapist right now. T tell me about your mother. Horror is able to manifest itself in a variety of ways, and so I always found it kind of lame when the same basic premise would get recycled and reused over and over without a layer of freshness being injected into it. Kind of like how channels recycle the same format of video, padding it out with unimportant information, such as explaining why horror exists. Now I'm going to skip past this guy explaining horror to us in a video about why the Slenderman movie was a mistake, and, you know, this has nothing to do with it, believe me. Uh, but I'm going to leave it in sped up, just so you can get kind of an idea of how long this goes on. And nothing is less interesting to me than the Slender Man. Okay, so number one reason so far why the Slender Man movie is a mistake. Okay, our first reason, first tangible reason out of the gate, uh, is that the maker of this video doesn't find him interesting. Okay. Good, good, solid start. Good reason. All right, let's let's move on. Slender Man as the subject for a movie just doesn't grab me as something really worth exploring. Okay, so now we're repeating that again. All right, let's continue. Just looks like it's going through and ticking those check marks to meet the requirements of, you know, scary. I swear to God, if I have to see one more person shove something in their eyes. All right, so we have number two. The number two reason uh, it ticks the boxes of what is scary. I would agree with this for the most part, uh, showing visuals of maggots and shit like that, you know, like from the ring. You know, it seems like it's, you know, 
similar to the ring with flashing creepy visuals on the screen. Uh, different stuff like that. Very much passe, very much overused, so on and so forth. But it would have been nice for this guy to give some examples of that in this sentence um, other than people jamming things in their eyes. Because as much as you may hate that, I don't know of many movies that have people jamming something in their own eye. Um, maybe people in the comments can correct me and name five movies recently that have had people jam things in their eyes, but to me it sounds like that is probably the least common <laughs> trope that you could have listed. Uh, the least common cliche. Uh, it just would have, it would have been nice if this dude had shown his, you know, work, done his homework on this and actually told us you know, what these tired cliches are, you know, what the boxes are that are being ticked. Uh, personally, I would say the ring-like visuals, uh, the creepy children, uh, the doll laughter, uh, you know, different things like that. I, I mean, I know they exist, I just feel like this guy got lazy. Look, I get it. Who am I? I'm just some dude. Oh my god, shut up and do your goddamn Slenderman video. But when people are clamoring for new ideas to enter into the mainstream, I don't know if the best idea is to jump onto an internet meme that's essentially become out of date and replaced by more recent additions. Okay, so now we have reason number three. This movie will be bad because it's based on an internet meme that has been replaced with newer memes. That is bullshit! Absolute and utter bullshit. Slenderman is not a meme. Slenderman is a character uh, that achieved viral status, mimetic status, you could even say, but it is not a meme. Um, this, you know, it's a character created for a contest on a message board that became shared around uh, in certain mimetic ways. But to put it in perspective, let me say this. There is a meme currently going around, or maybe it's not even current anymore, of steamed hams. Principal Skinner from The Simpsons uh, serving delicious steamed hams to Superintendent Chalmers. Um, clips of that on the internet made into memes. So if somebody made a new Simpsons movie, would you sit there and say, I don't think it's a good idea to make a movie based on a meme? That's what I'm talking about here. The content existed before it became a huge meme. So if you make a movie about it, it's not making a movie about the fucking memes. Uh, if there's an if there's a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, is that is that going to be <laughs> considered a film about Ugandan knuckles? A, a Slender Man movie is not about the memetic sharing of the picture across message boards or the creepy pastas written about it or even the games it's about the damn character now it may be popular because of the meme but i would contend that means jack shit uh now again i should stress this video is right but for the wrong reasons this movie is going to be bad but it's not because it's based on some stupid internet culture thing i mean <laughs> Let's get real here. Let's get real here. Uh, this is basically like Grandpa shouting from his porch at those damn memes on his lawn. It's basically devaluing a concept out of hand simply because it was popular on the internet. I mean, what is this backward thinking that, oh, that that's popular, or, or that was popular, so therefore it is a bad property. I mean, <laughs> give me a fucking break. The shelf life of a creepypasta, like a lot of memes, isn't very long. Oh my god. Creepypasta is a format, a genre, of short horror fiction posted on the internet by amateur authors. And this dude just sitting here being like, oh, creepypasta is a meme. Uh, you don't have any idea what you're talking about. Uh, creepypastas can be memes. And memes can be turned into creepypastas and vice versa. Anything, basically, can be a creepypasta. You know, you could write about fucking lost episodes, haunted games, uh, teenagers that go around stabbing people, whatever. All this crazy bullshit. But, yeah, I mean, it's it just shows a fundamental lack of understanding about anything this guy's talking about. And the problem I have with that 
as with all of these videos I answer, is that he's talking to an audience that is just going to listen to this and believe it. And that sucks. That, that you know, makes it so everybody who takes this to heart is going to be like, you know, oh, creepypasta, yeah, that dumb meme that had its day. That meme is over and dead, and people are, like, out here writing creative literature <laughs> of varying qualities. Some of it is dog shit, some of it is great. But, you know, people are out here writing, creating work, and there's just going to be, you know, these people who are like, wait, wait, what are you doing that old dead meme for? That old meme of writing your own content. What's doubly infuriating about this guy's statement is that he says, you know, creepypastas, like all memes, have a short lifespan. Jeff the Killer and Slenderman and, you know, Candle Cove and Smile Dog and The Rake and so on and so forth, uh, were coming up on or passing like a decade of them being in popular culture and becoming more and more mainstream with each passing year, for good or for bad. Candle Cove, you know, just turned into a terrible, terrible sci-fi channel show. Uh, same with No End House. Slenderman becoming a film. Jeff the Killer probably not far behind. The Rake probably going to be a film at some point. These are, these are stories that have enjoyed, in some cases, over a decade. Over a decade of popularity. But this <laughs> guy's... Just going to sit there and be like, you know, oh yeah, you know, creepypasta, like all memes, have short shelf lives. You know, t fucking god awful. God awful. And the idea to do a movie on this thing just strikes me as coming a little late when the fascination sort of died down around four years ago. The fascination died out six years ago. Um, but yeah, it had a little spike there. A little spike around the time, I guess, of the Slenderman stabbing. But, um... I just take issue with the idea that you think Slenderman is, you know, irrelevant and has been replaced by other uh, memes and, you know, whatever. So tell me, what other horror meme or creepypasta is more popular than Slenderman? What, what replaced Slenderman? Uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a moment to think of an answer to the question, what creepypasta replaced Slenderman as the most popular. If you said if you said nothing, that is the correct answer. I'm not saying use more up-to-date creepypasta character. I'm saying maybe we don't look to internet memes and stories for our ideas on horror movies. You stupid fuck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we don't look to the internet for ideas. I mean, you know, let's not look to the new authors. Let's not look to new characters. I, this is the problem. Just dismissing everything out of hand because grubby internet people came up with it. Call me old-fashioned and out of touch, but I don't think we should go to new creators, new characters, and new storylines in film. Because it's from the scary, stupid internet. By the way, please like, comment, and subscribe to my internet video channel. I get the idea of them being modern-day urban legends, but I mean, they don't last long at all. They fall out of fashion really quickly. Said the guy making a clickbait Slenderman video about the Slenderman movie ten years after Slenderman was first created. How much longer do I have to listen to a guy complain about something being outdated and irrelevant ten years into its popularity? Once you announce a movie, the wave has died somewhat. It's not really that prevalent anymore. And what happens? You're left with a movie that was banking solely on name recognition and doesn't even have that anymore. Feel free to make a valid point at any time as to why the Slenderman movie is a mistake, because there are plenty of reasons. There are plenty of valid reasons why the Slenderman movie is a mistake. But all you're doing is repeatedly saying... Slenderman isn't popular anymore, which is not fucking true. Because Slenderman is probably the most popular internet creation outside of a social media site. I mean, you know, if you take away the idea of a website being popular, like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc., Slenderman is probably the most well-known creation of the internet in the world. And if it's not the most, it's one of the most. So please, tell me about how it's a mistake to jam 
Slender Man into the cookie cutter of a Hollywood film. Please tell me about how it's a mistake to focus on children losing a friend in the woods due to the Slender Man stabbing. Please tell me anything about why this film is a mistake. Dishonoring the canon? I don't know. Is there any canon with Slender Man? Who fucking knows? Showing Slender Man in the trailer is a mistake. You know, showing Slender Man in the film, other than shadowy in the background in the mist, is probably a mistake. Uh, you know, there are so many mistakes you could pick from, but instead you go with probably the one mistake that isn't fucking true, which is, creepypastas are a meme that have a short lifespan, and Slender Man hasn't been popular since 2014. You're left with the confusing premise of some weird, thin guy that eats kids. He preys on them. It's vague. That's mostly due to the collaborative nature of the internet storytelling. On one hand, he complains about a trailer that ticks the boxes of Hollywood horror, and on the other hand, he complains about the original premise being too vague and mysterious. Okay, I guess this is just one of those videos where nothing really matters. Again, it's not really my place to say what is and isn't scary, what is and isn't literature, but I... <sighs> Look, y'all can answer me honestly, I don't think the future of mainstream horror lies in mining internet memes. Yeah, it's not your place to say what is or isn't literature, and if you say that short stories posted on the internet are not literature, you can go fuck yourself. Wow. I mean, this dude just openly said, uh, you know... <laughs> Oh, I'm done. I'm done with this jack-off. Unless interest is brought back due to controversy with the figure's relationship to an attempted murder in 2014, but I don't even think that would amount to much anyway. I mean, look at Ghostbusters and how well that strategy turned out for them. Um... What? Maybe I'm closed-minded? Maybe, but I'll just leave that up to you guys. Yeah, you're closed-minded. What do you think about all this? Is Slender Man really the next step in horror and in injecting freshness into the medium, or...? Can somebody show me where the producers of the Slender Man movie uh, said that this was going to inject freshness into the horror medium? Uh, because otherwise, this seems like a straw man argument. Or, or, why, or why, what are we doing? Making a fucking horror movie. That's what we're doing. And that's the overall problem with this video, and what I felt needed to be addressed is this video supposes that <laughs> Slender Man is being talked up as a bold, fresh, innovative film that will change and save the genre of horror, and that the internet is the future, and creepypastas are the future, and we must go to memes and creepypasta for our film ideas from henceforth. You know, that's what this this video has as its underpinnings. And it's all stuff that's just been made up uh, by the people making the video. Just, you know, supposition or just misdirection in order to churn out, as I said, a clickbait video that has the word Slenderman in the title. And, yeah, it's, again, kind of funny that we're going to talk about Slenderman being unpopular and outdated in a video made to capitalize on interest in the Slenderman movie and character. But yeah, uh, I'm not saying that Slenderman is as popular as it once was. The time to make the film has passed, in my opinion, but there's no problem with making a film now. Uh, you know, I, I'd like to see the doofuses behind this video explain just how outdated and irrelevant... Uh, Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, all those characters are, the next time there's a reboot or reimagining or a sequel to one of those horror franchises. Uh, they're making another Friday the 13th movie? Oh man, interest in Jason Voorhees ended in the 80s. You know, he's not popular anymore because it, it came out a long time ago. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, I just felt the need to address this because primarily, primarily I had issues with the idea that Creepypasta is a meme only, and the idea that Creepypasta isn't literature. Um, a lot of it is bad, as you may know, 
and I agree with that. But, you know, so are a lot of fucking romance novels, and I don't call them not literature as a genre just because there are bad ones. Uh, I don't know. I, it, it disappoints me when I see people with large audiences just selling snake oil. Ah, wait a minute. Fuck, I got through that whole video, edited it, printed it out, saved it, and I got through all that without remembering the fact that Slenderman isn't a fucking creepypasta. Oh, fuck. This guy's bad research rubbed off on me.